Call this meeting order at 6.01. Like to approve the minutes from October 5th, uh, October 5th please. We have a second. Yep. Any questions about the minutes? All in favor? Abstain. One, abstain. One, two, three. Actually, four. I vote here five. Did Cindy, Lynn, Bill, and Keith weren't here? Correct. So it has to be four. I see you there. We're here this time to make the other. We appreciate you. Patty, you all set? Sure. You have some financial good stuff for us? I do. So uh, I did send you out the report with the variance report, and um, we had an additional uh, $2,974.80 in savings between a, uh, with a new hire that we brought on board. So right now we have $34,742.80 in excess. Um, there is a variance <clears throat> on the report. I'm, I, I believe I pointed it out on page three. It's some stipends that are posted to the wrong account and I need to work with, um, I did work with Sarah Mitchell today. I need to talk with Mr. Modesto tomorrow and I will get those reclassed to the proper lines. Um, the other thing, uh, you did sign warrants, 21 warrants tonight in the, the total of $1,444,755.62. Uh, the other packet of information that I left at the table for you tonight is the results of FY17. Uh, the first page, I, I gave you the balance of all the revolving funds at uh, June 30th. Uh, and then the packet has the OO, the general fund revenue, the general fund expenses for uh, FY17, and then the back pages are the revolving funds, uh, the activity for the year, for your review. Um, the auditors uh, were in last week and we are expecting to have them uh, present the financials at the December 12th meeting. Anybody have any questions for Pat? Question, uh, school lunch. How much is the deficit? Okay, oh, okay, so um, there was a zero balance. If you look <clears throat> on page, give me one minute. If you look on page five of the report, Right in the middle of the page, it says cafeteria wages, and it's a budget variance of sixty thousand six eighty one seventy. That was the final loss in the program. That's what we had to move out of the revolving fund to make it whole, and move on to the general fund. So the actual loss for last year was sixty thousand six eighty one seventy. Direct cost. Pardon. Direct cost. 60. Labor costs. Yes. That's, I, I moved sixty six zero six eight one point seven. Page five I in the it. middle. I got it. Okay, thank you. This year it's going to be higher, though, right? No, it should be. We're hoping it's going to be lower. We want to play it better. Moving on. Anybody else have any more? Yeah. Rental of school buildings, thirty-seven thousand. We've taken that much money and. Rental with school that's not one year that's cumulative that's the balance as of june 30th if you go um what we took in this year we had revenues oh. of fourteen thousand seven hundred and seventy eight dollars and that's basically from uh, the church and the, the, we have a weekly church that meets we have some uh performances that rent uh the facilities um Efforts. I think the athletics, yes, and the athletic, the, the gym party, rentals. Not the rec departments, but there's other ones outside of the rec department. The, the instructional program that the, they run in the summer, is that what it is? Um, oh, yeah, the summer basketball league as well. The summer basketball camp as well. Yep. All right, so. And the volleyball we, does as well. So we have that money, and that's basically unrestricted, correct? No, it's restricted to the use of getting, preparing the building to be rented. Yeah, well, we can spend it on the building. Yes, we can spend it on the building in order to prepare the building for rental. 
So, for example, if we are going to rent the gym and they're renting basketball, we could heck, fix the basketball hoop so that they can rent that. Um, we could, if we want the floors to look pristine and we want to shine the floors, we could buy a floor machine to get the floors. Or we could resand the floors. So we could whatever. resand. We could resand. That's my point. Right. We, we can't purpose that money. Right. Towards the right. But you couldn't replace windows because that w the windows wouldn't be something people would be looking at when <clears throat> renting a building. But we can, if we if we're going to resurface the floors, like you told us, we should be doing it. I never said that. Somebody did. Oh, uh, in our uh, bond list. presentation. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about like the gym floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question off of that? Um, there was a gentleman here several months ago, meetings ago, that asked ab us about our review for renting out and that it was a five-year review process. Mm -hmm. And I've been on this committee for several years. I've never reviewed anything to update it or anything. Can we pass so Dr. Carey's list? Okay. So the plan is um, after, the, after the holiday season, um, I'm going to call together the policy subcommittee, okay. and that will be one of the things we look at as part of the policy subcommittee and then come back to you. Um, okay. And we've already started pulling some data uh, as Excellent. far as like our custodial rates and things like Excellent. that. And I w Mr. Modesto and I will be making a recommendation to Dr. Carey and her policy committee for what we think that. So do we have a, okay. an idea relative to the uh, study on the cafeterias and the, the program there, uh, where we're gonna take that money from and uh, and how much of it is going to be ours and how much of it's going to be uh, the four towns? Well, right now, the, the consultant who will be finishing up because we did have a hire, um, the consultant's bill can only be the three schools that we that were already in the joint for, for food service manager. So it's Waitley, uh, Sunderland, and Frontier. So Frontier will pay a third? No, it, that's not how it was set up. Going forward, it will be done so in other words, correctly. So, you're, you're going to take, we're going to pay the more lion's than half share. Of it, yes. Probably close to three quarters. Probably. <coughs> and where are you going to take the money from? Well, we'll do what uh, I was planning on doing, what I normally do. We wait till we get to the end of the year, see what we're in the hole, and then either take it from school choice or take it for if we have money available like we did this year and take it out of here. But, but we had the. Uh, Right now, you're only projecting a, a surplus of about thirty-four thousand. I'm not projecting any pr surplus. What are you saying? School that lunch. There's those, zero. Those certain accounts that we have that are over and under the new right. hires and everything else. That it's about thirty-four thousand seven hundred. So we basically, you know, that's the only thing that we know that we're going to have right now. Yeah. But if you look on page. Even taking in the sixty thousand dollars loss on here, if you look at page eight, we still had one hundred and seven thousand dollars that we didn't spend in FY seventeen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, I think for any other, if, if there's any other questions about the cafeteria, I guess we do have a new hire, and we and we'll be talking about it later on in the meeting about the new hire. Is that true? Yes, it's part of my superintendent's okay. report. Okay. And we'll talk uh, if there's any other questions. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Any other questions for Patty? Oh. Any public comment out there tonight? Okay, we're, we're going to do a little jump in here. We're going to, we have a little bit of unfinished business, but we're going to jump up to the new business and get our wonderful teachers talking about three, three trips coming up. And uh, I think, Jason, you're up first. And uh, eighth grade trip to uh, Washington, D.C. and Philly, February 26th to March 2nd of next year. You got 17 down here. Does it, does it say 17? Yeah. Uh, oh, so it's, it's 18, it should right? should be 18. Okay. Correct. And the uh, thank floor, you. And your floor is yours. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for uh, giving me a couple minutes of your time. Um, we're getting all geared up for, I think it's the 27th annual trip. And so we're all excited. Um, <clears throat> we have a couple of new approaches going into it this year. We have uh, Melissa Strelke, the English teacher on the eighth grade team, has uh, taken upon herself the actual planning of the trip. So we're not using the, the 
tours of distinction, middle, middle man company anymore to try to cut down on costs. So Melissa Strelke booked the whole trip herself. So we've uh, been able to lower the price significantly per student. So last year is six ninety five <coughs> per kid, um, and that didn't include about ten meals. So six ninety five plus ten additional meals per kid that had to come out of pocket. So um, Melissa Strelke has gotten the trip down to six sixty all inclusive, wow. all meals paid for. That's and, that's, and that's because she's yeah. made all the calls, booked every museum, restaurant herself. Kudos to her. Kudos mm -hmm. to her. She put a lot of time in over the summer. Good job. Lined everything up. <clears throat> so we're really thrilled that she's been able to do that for, for everybody's sake. She also added in, <clears throat> we all agreed, discussed uh, stopping in Philadelphia on the way down for couple of educational programs, the Constitutional Center, and, and dinner, and then arriving in D.C. in the evening. Uh, so that, that's another exciting uh, addition. Polly, Wozzi, uh, Polly Wozni is basically in charge of the, the fundraising events to help uh, build up the scholarship fund to help the kids, you know, whose families may be struggling with that kind of price tag. So we've already had the fish fry. Uh, we've got the basket raffle coming up. We've got a uh, Chipotle, November 28th. Half of the proceeds between five and seven. Anybody goes shopping, you know, buys a meal there on Tuesday the 28th. Jason, would that be the Hadley Chipotle? The Hadley Chipotle, November 28th. Mm. We get half the proceeds. Uh, and Polly's also, Ms. Watson, has also done a great job at uh, talking to some local businesses about donations to try to build up our scholarship fund. What time, excuse me, was that on the 28th between? I think it's, it's, I think it's four to seven. Four to seven, it's, okay, thanks. It's three hours. Um, <clears throat> so Polly Wozni has done a lot of work in the fundraising regard. We appreciate that, certainly. We have all the information has been distributed, all the uh, paperwork for all the families. We gave them everything at once this year on open house night and we have everything up on the online portal which you can get through you know through the uh, frontier website there's a, a link to the washington dc portal with all the forums and information there so um, we're trying to st streamline things and improve every year and, and we're excited to to do it again and uh, it's a lot of work but it's uh, it's worth it it's tied into our curriculum uh, and it's a it's a memory that kids take with them when they go. So, any questions or clarifications I can make, I'd be happy. The bus contractor, King Ward buses. Yeah, as usual. Okay. Yeah. King Ward buses per usual. I have a question, but I don't know who it's for. Do the teachers that do the planning get ADCOM? Do currently, no. They've, they've requested it. They, they've requested a stipend, um, and I'm working on that now. Okay. So, hoping to be able to do something for them. And it might be end up in the budget next year. So, we might be talking about that future. But they approached me this year, but this year's budget's already been set. Um, but, you know, long term, the amount of hours are taking, it takes place outside. I know those who've done it for the past 27 years will be, you know, um, but there is, it will be, uh, sigh. No we'll sigh, but however, there is a, um, you know the amount of time it's taking um, from them, and in order to keep it going, um, it may require some some stipend for their their efforts. So. You won't tell Bob Smith. Okay, that's that's what I was alluding to. I'm sure he's Bob. already <laughs> watching television. <laughs> um, security at night, so teachers can sleep. Is that still on? Still that part was of the program. okay. Yep, we've been using the same company for a number of years. Alpha Security. Okay. That's helpful, certainly. Yeah, so we can get a little bit of sleep. I don't think anything was removed by moving away from yeah. the company that was used in the past. I went through right. the entire itinerary. Everything is the same, actually more. They're going to do more than they've done in the past. It's yeah. just that the legwork was done instead of handing it off to a travel agency that um, I think in the end they just weren't satisfied with what we were paying for versus what the actual cost was. The markup was substantial for each student. 
Uh, that reminds me, we also uh, moved the hotel in closer to the city, um, uh, which is going to save us on time so we can do a little more programming. <coughs> uh, I can't remember the exact number of minutes, but we're at least 20 minutes closer, which oh, makes good. a pretty big difference actually when you factor in traffic. And so. so moved. Good. Bill seconded. All in favor? Thank you, Jason. Thanks, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is uh, AP Government, AP European History Student Trip to Washington, D.C. on the 17th to the 21st of 2000, 2018. It is for 2018, right? Yes. Because it says 2017 here. How was the trip? It says 2018 on this one. <laughs> and ours, and ours, and ours you already went. <laughs> well, we did go last year. But we're done. So this is this is basically um, a copy of last year's itinerary. We're going to try and do the same thing more and more. And I, right now, we have between 36 and 39 students that have already paid the deposit to go. Wow. And we have four chaperones going, two male chaperones and, and Laura Moore and I. Um, I just wanted to add some of the things that we did get to do last year that aren't on the itinerary other than meeting with um, members of Congress. Last year, and this is actually three out of the past four years, we were able to sit down with Jim McGovern. He gave us at least 45 minutes of his time with all the kids piled into his office, which is a lot of fun. Um, we've had meet and greets with Elizabeth Warren, so the kids all get pictures taken with her. Last year we got to be first in line for her. Um, meet and greet that she did in the afternoon. We met John Lewis again, which is always fantastic for us to do. And last year we got to meet with Bernie Sanders' staff who worked on education policy because Laura lives up in Brattleboro, so we were able to get into his office as well. So the kids loved it when we did the Capitol tour and, and we get to march around like the Senate building. I mean, it's, it's just a lot of fun. And then we get tickets so we can go in either to yeah. see the House in session or to go into the Senate. So they usually give us passes to do that. Um, last year, with it being the opening year, we got tickets to get into the African American History Museum. And we'll, we know how to do that now, and we'll make sure that we get that done as well. So every kid was able to get in there. And what else did we do? Uh, I think we put. Arlington on Sunday because the museums don't have to open until 11 o'clock and now we can do Arlington in the morning wow. before um, instead of trying to rush later on before they close or, or um, having an overlap with times that we might be meeting with somebody because we can only meet with representatives on Monday and Tuesday and then Laura does her Supreme Court <clears throat> visit early, early, early on the Monday morning and the AP Euro kids get to sleep in and we go to the National Gallery and we don't have to be there until 10, so that's all. <laughs> Instead of getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go stand outside. So, any, and we stay right downtown at Foggy Bottom and we stay in a hotel that's actually right in the middle of George Washington University and they have little mini suites with little kitchen so they can have breakfasts right in the rooms and they're nice little boutique hotels that we, that we stay in and all of our transportation around we take them all on the subways. Wow. Yeah. So How many kids do you think you're going to have total? There's, there's between 36 and 39 and the only problem that we're having a conflict with is the musical is because we leave on Saturday morning and the last performance of the musical is Saturday night. And we're trying to see if there's a way that, I think there are three kids that are going to try out for the musical, three or four that we're trying to figure out if there's a way that they could either take the train or have a parent bring them down. We're not, we're not sure how that's going to work. But we go on Saturday morning and the musical, the last performance is Saturday night, so we're not sure. We're not sure with that. So it might be 36, but it might be 39. Good, good number. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Chris, good. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I should probably ask Mr. Smith as well, but uh, plan for kids to make up work during the school this time. 
Um, they all have to get their work ahead of time, and we actually require them to have evening time in their rooms doing their work. And the teachers are really good about actually giving them assignments to do that tie into us being in Washington, which is which is really nice. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Thank you. Carly, you're next. Student trip to Greece and Italy, spring of 2019. Okay. Not 17. Not 17. In case you'd like to see an itinerary. And while that's going around, um, I'd just like to read a little bit about ACIS, which is the company that I have used on several times. It's American Council for International Studies. ACIS is one of the country's leading sponsors of educational trips. Its programs are fully insured, and its nationwide reputation is based on over 35 years of experience with more than 500,000 student and adult travelers. They have a 24-hour, 365-day support network staffed by ACIS employees, both in the U.S. and overseas. They use only three- and four-star hotels in popular and safe areas and the best sources of local transportation. Our group will be in the good hands of an ACIS tour manager, a highly trained multilingual guide and educator. Our tour manager will not only explain what we are seeing, but how it came to be and why it matters. ACIS tour managers are renowned for bringing a unique perspective to the tours, combined with a love of teaching and an irresistible enthusiasm for the regions they describe. Our tour manager will serve as an accessible, authoritative source of information, helping students form a basis for exploration. His or her expertise will certainly enhance all that I have taught our students at home. So I, this would be the fifth trip that I have taken um, with students. It would be the fourth trip I've taken with this particular tour company. And I choose it because I'm very, very comfortable with them. I feel safe with them. I feel like they have an excellent product. Um, they don't advertise themselves as the, 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 a budget travel company, however. So the cost is quite considerable and to each student, and that's why I want to do this early so that the students have a chance to get on the plan uh, with, with the company. Do you have questions for me? This is a trip to uh, Greece and then an overnight ferry to Italy with the last part of the trip being in Italy. Do you have a copy of this? Because on um, April 13th, it says perhaps stop for a plate of honey-soaked cinnamon spiced, and I don't know what that next word is. I don't is that like I'm cinnamon is buns? It, yeah. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's pastry. Can you bring it back? Is it baklava? Or they say baklava? No. no, it's not baklava. Oh, okay. oh, okay. No, it's like a roll, cinnamon roll kind of a pastry. Oh. <laughs> that sounds um, good. That's okay, so I approve like on this that. trip. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's on, it's not me. I could really use one of those right now. Yeah, they're good. If you're going to be able to eat something that has cinnamon and honey in it, I'm good. Yeah, that sounds good. Wow. Good question. Can you bring food back? To the committee. Try. Are you going to have a scholarship program to, for the kids that aren't so quite so fortunate? So this, this question comes up each time and I struggle with it because I know how expensive these trips are. So I have actually on a couple of occasions tried to do some fundraising and I find that what that requires is a fairly significant amount of time on my part with a few students helping out, but usually in the past maybe one or two students being able to make it to the fundraising opportunities and because students are very busy. So the thing is, the only cost that that can reasonably defer is the cost of all of us getting to the airport. But I can't actually pay or help pay any money for any student because they have their own arrangement with the tour company where they pay directly, their mm -hmm. families pay directly per month. So I have done that in the past, try to, to do some things that would defray the cost of all of us getting to the airport. So that, that but that's mostly been um, on my part because it's very difficult to get students together and then the problem is if only a couple participate do they all get the benefit of that or just the couple that participated so I, I know it's it's a very large amount of money the problem with Italy is that it's not easy to go to Italy on a budget it's a very expensive country to visit and so part of the problem is it's kind of built in that way I think does anybody else have any questions oh, I how many kids? 
when I've done these trips, I've usually had anywhere from maybe six to 12 students, and that's fine with me. I think a small group is wonderful. What they do is they, they combine you with other students, other schools, and so that's been nice too for the students because we've always gone with other schools from anywhere in the country, and they combine you, and so you, the students get to meet new people that way as well. Question. Okay. A motion? I want to go. Okay. <laughs> want to take Phil with you? Sure. There are adults are going to go too. Cool. Phil? <laughs> Second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we want to continue? No. Okay, we got we got one item on unfinished. We're gonna do a update on the uh, timeline for the RFP for the blue school. I'm not sure who's gonna... Can I do it? Sure. Thank you. So I handed out um, a sheet that has in its uh, Christian Lane. Thank you. So it looks like this in its Christian Lane uh, timeline. So the um, the school commit the school building exploration committee uh, met again on October 31st. We had brought to you a timeline in September that the school committee, the Frontier Regional School Committee, approved of and agreed on. Um, when Waitley went, when the town administrator Waitley went to his select committee, they asked us. They suggested that we wait not we wait so that we wouldn't be selling or putting out the RFP and looking <clears throat> at bids during the holiday season to push it out and so that it would be closer to uh, a time where they could look at bids closer to their town meeting time. They don't want a special town meeting but they do need to have a town meeting to discuss this. So. Uh, it was recommended by the Town of Waitley that we move our earlier timeline uh, from submitting the RFP in October and accepting bids in December to one that would not conflict with the holiday season. In addition, uh, as FRSD has planned to submit their RFP simultaneously with the Town of Waitley's RFP to, for the adjacent lot, we need to adopt the new timeline to ensure the voters of Waitley will be able to vote on the sale of the lot during their annual town meeting on April 24. It was also discussed that RFD, RF Frontier Regional has funds to see the Christian Lane building heated during this winter season without additional funding um, and sending the two RFPs out together is still desired. Because of the cross encumbrances on the two lots, we really would like to sell these two lots in, late, two lots in Waitley together. Uh, so what we, uh, the subcommittee voted uh, Bob Decker, Judy Pierce, Bob Holla, and Phil Cantor, they voted to uh, propose this timeline to the Frontier Regional School Committee for their approval uh, to update our previous vote. And that's where we are. I'll take it over, Bob. Um, we had our meeting last night at Waitley because the little glitch it could have on the uh, Waitley, town of Waitley is that there's a softball field in the backyard there. So one of the, we have to prepare for questions on if they're gonna sell a lot, how come you're selling a, a lot that has one of our fields on it. So uh, we, we had a meeting last night with the school committee in Waitley and talked to the principal and there's a possibility, there's a couple spaces, there's a field there now and there's an adjoining field right next to the driveway that we could turn into a softball field for the town and and anybody else wants to use it. So so that might be a glitch down at the blue school because there is a softball field down there. And uh, <clears throat> right now that we're, we're pursuing on finding a relocation for that. So that won't hurt the sale from lately of that building lot to go with the blue school. And if you have anything else you want to add? To? Well, if you're looking at um, the, the proposed schedule, this was prepared by Brian 
Scalabrini or whatever the town is. Domino. Domino, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. the basketball player. Yeah, right, right, right. The Brian Domino, the, uh, the uh, uh, town administrator. So that's why it kind of reads a little awkwardly. It's just transpose it to sort of mean Frontier does the X, Y, and Z instead of Waitley does X, yeah. Y, and Z. But this also does illustrate the coordination that's taking place so that we have our respective ducks lined up in order, mm -hmm. which is essential and good. So, yes. So that, you know, on the case of the field, that might be the only thing that may hold it up, but I think there's there's two spaces at the elementary school that could house a second and third grade softball field, which who uses it now. They have a $10,000 CPA money to upgrade that field behind the blue school. So instead of upgrading that one, we can probably build one for probably less than $10,000 and put it at the elementary school where not only, you know, rec can use it, also uh, the school could use it. The CPA money, I'm sorry, I spoke for that. That's right. Does CPA money take care of building something new or is it only fixing something? It, it can be used for that? Okay. There's all those little regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, did the Whaley School Committee vote to uh, allow uh, the use of those fields for public recreation uh, so that that's all cemented? We opened the discussion last night and we'll be looking for a vote uh, either December or January. Oh, I would suggest that it be done before it goes to the town meeting. Right. So oh, that definitely. It, so that's all cleaned yeah. up. Yeah. And there's no questions. That we'll have all, hopefully have all our ducks in a row when, when town meeting comes around. You know, hopefully we'll have people bidding on it. So uh, we'll have some bids in hand uh, for <clears> the blue school and the lot, hopefully being used at the same time by the same person and stuff. So, uh, so when it does go in front of the town of Waitley. You know. Okay, I just want to make sure that we, yeah. I, I don't want to wait and then not be able to sell it. Does anybody else have any questions? Approve the timeline. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Two seconds. Thank you. Is it Bill? Bill. Okay, thanks. Okay, we're on new business. We're going back to D. Discuss the recommendation, Superintendent Kirkadine. Facilities subcommittee to focus on items presented at Paul's bond request. We pr we proposed a three point four million dollar bond uh, on the twenty fourth of October, and one of our uh, one of our positions was that we would like to have a subcommittee, uh, not only of school committee members but also of town uh, selectmen and or finance committee members that would um, work with us as we move forward we're probably looking at a, uh, a bond request date uh, spring 2019 but we need to uh, sit down start working on a strategy to really bring it out and market it we also, uh, I have an appointment, well, I have a meeting with the town administrators on the 21st of November to talk about, uh, with Jim Barry to talk about grants that are available. I've made contact with the superintendent of Quabbin Regional School District, who is uh, working with the state to see if they can't, um, there's Wachusett School District and Quabbin, and they're both getting new tracks and I'd like to see if our regional school could get in on that because if a company comes to put in new tracks and the three companies work together, the cost might go down. So we have some, we certainly have a lot of background work to do to be able to completely present this. And uh, we, I, I am requesting the school committee allow us to put together a uh, renovation subcommittee for this purpose. I think also that was spoke at, the, at that meeting that night was also besides school committee members and town administrators also having some professional people in the building trades that can get involved with this too. Um, you know, if we can get a couple of building trades people on this committee, I think that's going to help us. You know, instead of somebody reading off light items, 
they can they can help us with the bidding process or the picking process of the building part of this bond, not picking lawnmowers or something like that, but the actual building of building materials. So, I mean, I, 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 those are good ideas. I think we would be better off with as much specificity as to how exactly you want the committee to look like before we approve the committee. Otherwise, we're going to be hard pressed to limit the size of the committee. Um, if every town has finance, select board, contractor, so, uh, school committee, um, we're talking 20 something people in a basically unworkable meeting. So uh, now's the time, month. So what I'm trying to say is that now's the time to talk about it and vote on it so that then we can say this is what the size is. It's, it's, so, it's something like we could, like we do with um, negotiations. They pick one person, usually a select person or a town administrator that will come into the negotiation. Yeah, those are all you know, instead of having, like you said, four administrators and you know multiple select board members, maybe they pick one person to get on the subcommittee. So, if you had one town person, one school committee person, one person at large. Uh, community person and one labor person. Um, I think you do need to have somebody from the trades involved in actually listen to them. Um, but something was said at that meeting and I, I didn't say anything that night because it's just a bunch of thoughts, but we would be foolish to not bring this before the building committee in Massachusetts. Um, is it MBSA and SSB? MSBA. Yes. Um, because what Skip said was they were waiting on a $500,000 check. He didn't say they weren't going to get it. He said they were waiting on it. So for us to not at least look into that, that's a lot of money for our um, taxpayers. So if we even got, you know, 30% of it paid by them, and I don't know what their percentages are for different things, it would be crazy not to let, I couldn't go before the town and tell them we didn't look at it because somebody was mad because they didn't get their check in a timely manner right. for five hundred thousand dollars i think we do need to, to look at it but we also have to keep in mind that with it came the state selecting the project managers and all those other mm -hmm. red tape things and it might cost us more money for some of that stuff but i still think we should look at it because we owe it to the taxpayers to do the due diligence okay uh, when the elementary school was built here many many years ago there was an ad hoc committee that was appointed that included a whole bunch of builders and what have you and I know Jack Petrork was on it and there was a bunch of other builders that were on it uh, to talk about the construction of it and, and those different things uh, and you know we may want to just have an ad hoc advisory committee that cons just consists of tradespeople and 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 that like all right I'm, but that's just a thought of mine that they there was an ad hoc committee and that was probably 30 years ago and uh, it worked seemed to work pretty well we after six or seven votes we finally got the school approved <laughs> you probably weren't around then so bill and mary aren't saying anything <laughs> And you were on the last. Hold on. <laughs> I built this building twice. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, we already got your name in there. got a wall over there. You're but, stuck. Um, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting you're on the committee, Two but guidance more, for more fun who than any is man on have. the committee. You at least have yeah, some guidance. past history twice, I believe, for both of you. Right, Mary? You were on both? No, once. Just once? Just once. But just what the, the committee was. Um, Ten years of my life. How, how to build a committee, you two are the, definitely the best people to go to how to build a committee not be on the committee he didn't say that how to build it could make you ex official but if you want to be on it that would take care of it how many people were on it go over there and look at the plaque on the wall 15, ours must have been the building committee itself there must have been 15 or or 16 i would think go over there on a wall yeah but that's 50, i'm sure he remembers but 15 should we come up with a number that 15 was people is well, a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, a lot of different opinions. Well, and, and for next can we do steps. some research and come back when to we the did, next meeting? When we did the first, when we did the first building up here, I'll tell you in a minute how many new burgers over here. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking kind of slow. I know. <laughs> 
He's going to read us the names. Was a son of a. So we had school committee people and selectmen on that one. Yeah. And I know the other. If you look at the other one downstairs in the lobby, people like Bruce Brown. I don't know if, if they, he from Conway. Did he come from the finance committee or was he a person at large from Conway? Or I can't remember. I'd have to look. You'd have to look at the list downstairs. But it was bigger than that than seven or eight. I uh, I know it was. For this, for the bigger project, for the twenty-three million dollar project. So, can we research the, the, the number of people and look at that stuff? And, and then can we inquire? We just, we just walked away to the back wall. A couple more research teams. No, no, but I'm saying about the, the other people he's talking about when they rebuilt the whole structure, not just right. That's when we knocked down the three-story yeah. yeah. front building and redid the whole nine yards. Yeah. That was a much bigger committee than that. Yeah, but I mean, can we research it? Maybe some of those people might, uh, if they're still active, they might have some expertise. And they might not. Oh, and I, I don't. I don't recall that. I think the school committee um, would want one person from each town. In the, in the so there's four from uh, from this committee. Yeah. Right. So and I and I'm, and I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. That we didn't really go out of our way to pick tradespeople or anybody else for that committee. I'm not even. I'm not sure that the school committee didn't take the recommendation. So the select when the select boards in the four towns didn't send, give us a person. To serve on the building yeah. committee rather than us go out mm -hmm. beating the bushes ask the people who run the town of deerfield give us your best person maybe they give you a, a builder jeff upton maybe, a, maybe who was a builder contractor or kip camosa or somebody or maybe they give you a regular citizen like the town of deerfield is better suited to pick their people on I the agree. building committee than we are as is sunderland conway or waitley in my estimation anyway let them pick their own Maybe it's one of them, so like, and maybe it's somebody from the committee or two. You know, you'd have to go down. You'd have to go downstairs and count that. But I know it's more. I know it's more than seven, because that was a pretty good. That was a pretty good sized meeting that we used to have. There was a there was a bunch of folks there. Twelve to fifteen, I would and say. And then we had faculty, right? Is that how? Uh, I believe so. That's how Bob was on, right? Yep, my brother Bob was. I think whether the t there again whether the. Waitley Selectman put him on, or if he was a faculty representative. If you look, I, I think if you look at that thing long enough, two of those people, we, it would come back to you how, how the, the nexus, how they got to the committee, whether they came through the town or from some other other organization, because you, all you got to do is separate them by town, and then you'll know how many there are, and you'll be able to figure out where they, where they came from. But I can't list them all off the top of my head too many years ago. I just got a question. When the Deerfield did their roof last year, I heard something about being held hostage. What was that all about, Bob? That's the accelerated can, building I, program. I can tell you what about. happened with that. They requested, when you, when we contracted with the designer, the architect, they built so many meetings into the bid and the town of Deerfield was requesting them to come to more meetings so they build them for them for them to come because they were coming from Boston mm -hmm. and they didn't like that that they were getting billed for them to come to meetings and so they felt that they were being held hostage that in order for them to get answers they had to pay them to come to the meetings they went through the accelerated building program yes that they did you see that's how you end up with a firm from Boston Mm -hmm. The state gives you whoever mm -hmm. they'll, they feel like giving you. Mm -hmm. to but they your vet project. them too. I mean, that's the other part. When, when you're getting them from NSBA, these are vetted people who are DCAM certified. I understand that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's benefits to Anybody it. Anybody that we well. used, if they were from our area, they'd have to be DCAM certified. That's, that's and there something. are DCAM certified in our area. But can, can I just say that there is more to it than that? I think when, because Mr. Camosa came to our, was it budget yes, or budget. school? And, and he laid out a philosophical objection to the use of the MBHA. That, mm -hmm. The uh, subcommittee, yes. And, and that, that he, he really feels that because of the list of contractors that you're limited to, that that we that financially it makes more sense. I'm not saying I agree with the word of what, of, but. The but, first lesson you need to get from anybody who serves on a building committee is the, is the difference, the pronounced difference between building in the private sector and building in the public sector. They are grossly 
different operations. You can do just about anything you want in the private sector mm -hmm. because it's your money, you can do anything you want with it. When you're building in the public sector, mm -hmm. there's a million laws. list of regulations and for everything. And mm -hmm. that's what the MSBA is trying to do. They're trying to save cities and towns the steps of going through and bidding for a project manager and then bidding for a designer. They are trying to expedite that process. Regardless of we take their money or not, these processes need to be followed based on mass general law of what the pro what the project is going to cost. So they can be against it if they want to be, but they're giving up 30% of the money for something we're going to spend anyway. And it doesn't, what does it matter if they're from Boston or Springfield or Worcester? This, it's the same money that's going to be spent. By, by using MSBA, you get the, up to probably 40, 45% of your money back. I'm just saying we should check with them as a taxpayer. Curious. Before we go down all these different rabbit holes, it, it, the, from my understanding, and I asked Patty to correct me, the MSBA has two tracks of funding. Mm -hmm. One is emergency roof and window replacement. Accelerated Accelerated repair. emergency, okay. And the other one is full building replacement. Right. To get in line for the full building replacement, it takes many, many years, and you will sit in line for many, many years. Right. And this building will not qualify for a full replacement compared to the other schools that I know that are in line. Right. Okay, that's my opinion. It's, okay, it's, it's not a full complete, it's not, it, it, I will, it, it's a major renovation or replacement. So, but yes, you'll sit through three cycles. You'll, you'll definitely sit through three cycles, minimally. Is, is that three, three, cycles is that a, a year? year or is the cycle yes. several years? Oh. So it was my understanding that going after MSBA money was not realistic for this project that we're looking right. at. We're also, we're also comparing this project to a, what was the last project, 22 million? Mm -hmm. There's not even a quarter of that kind of money. Right. So while I know the town wants us to be very thorough, it is a, on a scale of what we're asking to do. We're not talking about redesigning the whole school where you'd have teachers involved and community members involved. We're talking about repairing to last the next 20 years. And I don't know if that's, I know I said that the other night, but that's how I think we should be selling it. We're trying to get this building in a place to last another 20 years before we do another overhaul. Right. And and so, at least that's kind of my angle on this, is that you know the building's in good shape. You walked in through it tonight. You know, it's, it's, in, it's in very good shape, but some of the things, the bones behind it have to be kept in shape. And we're, I don't want to say we're only talking about three point something million dollars, and people at people home are shaking only three. But when you talk about the value of this building, the budget which this building runs on, proportionally is not it's not you know out of control looking for money you know so I just want to kind of put that in perspective because you want to put a 16 person committee together with builders from the community who to get commu builders from the community that understand the techno the, the the level of to volunteer their time we're not building anything exactly okay, you got to keep that in mind through this whole thing it was a whole different thing that, that we were doing we watched the three-story building disappear mm -hmm. and Amazing. something Students else took a rise up in its place and then then this end we moved down there this whole end of the building got demolished if you remember you go back i mean cindy went to school here she knows what the place used to look like once upon a time oh, i just graduated a few years ago <laughs> this is just a major just a major operation Jeez, bill yeah, but you know what the place yeah, used to look like. i do well i lived right over there yes i know we watched it yeah. we heard it i went to school with your brother um, so, so putting all ideas on the table, which I think is a very healthy thing, um, 15 people is still way too many for, for such this. a project. Yeah. Um, seven may be too many, five may be what we're looking for. I, I don't know, I think it's a single digit number. It should be an odd number. Yes, no, and I personally believe that Darius should be involved in this, sorry, the bus, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, for years now, I have heard you talking about the building. So you do have expertise on this building along with Bob. And because you virtually live in most of the building, I think you are more apt to be able to keep track of things better. So I am I am putting it out there that we should badger Mr. Modesto to be on this committee so or, hold on, hold on. or make him be on this committee. Can we do that? <laughs> hold, hold on for Bob. Patty, what, what, was our, what was our budget for Frontier last year? Our budget? I'll run it off the top of my head, please. 10 4, 10 6. Okay. 10 4, and we have how many people on the subcommittee to figure out the budget? Four. 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 Four plus the superintendent and Patty? Mm -hmm. 
Darius. And Darius. So I think we should be in that same lines of five people, you know, one from each town and one, one board member from, you know, uh, a person from one of the four towns as a spokesperson. You know, I think we have Bob as our, Bob Lesko, I think is full of knowledge. I mean, technical advisor. Yeah, he's, I think he's, I think he's right there. You know, if, how about we do it with nine, Ooh. four, four, just a total of nine, four from this committee. Yeah. Darius, and let the selectmen pick one from each of the towns. How about one from each town, two from this committee, and one administrator? Where they really make sense. That's fine. How about what you just said, and Darius is the chair? That's I just left it yeah, the as an administrator. They can fight amongst themselves um, who's going to I think the we straw. can do that. Seriously, I think that's within Let our Let the selectmen from the each town send us one, whoever they want, tradesperson, one of themselves, their finance committee chairman, or whoever. Exactly. Still, four of them, two of us, and one administrator, whoever gets the short straw when you guys sit down at and, and, you know, we already know what that's Yeah, so that's Bill, Bill, you're going to have to be on it now. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'd also think, like to, uh, um, so we have seven, uh, four from, one from each town, two school committee members, one administrator. I'd also like to have Bob Lesko on it. Well, well he doesn't have to be a voting member. He's going to be no. retired by he, he, he can be a... Um, but I think the way you look at it is you have a committee, and the committee invites in whoever school right, personnel I think. they need. Sounds good. So if we need Patty, that way, he doesn't have to be there all the time. Do, yeah. yeah, I'm not coming oh, with yeah. you. You are not dragging me into this. So, you know, I mean, I think it's, I okay. think you have the, the committee, only, and then you have the, the professional. Only possible flaw with this strategy is that if the majority is invites from the various town halls, there is a possibility that the majority will not actually be in favor of the project. Okay. So, so maybe yeah. the majority should just be school committee, just so that you have a certainty that the majority of the committee will be uh, in favor, actually in favor of making the project happen. Just an idea. If it's worthwhile, we should be able to sell it. <coughs> yeah, not necessarily. I, I, I look at, I, um, it's just an idea. I, I feel it's like just, no just, matter which way we ask article. them, they say no. We put it in the budget, they say no. We put it on a Warren article, they say no. We ask to borrow, they say no. We ask to use E&D, they say no. So that's why I'm cautious <laughs> about having them be a majority of the committee. I don't think it's in their purview. I think it's our job to shepherd this project through, not mm -hmm. theirs. It's our job to solicit their feedback and their input. They asked it. They told us the way they want us to do it, or we got that feedback in that town hall meeting that we had. Um, doesn't mean we have to take it, right? I mean, it, do, it really doesn't. I think it's on us to carry it through. I think it's on them to respond and react if we call them in or we ask for two people. I think. <coughs> I suspect that they probably will probably they might want to send somebody from every town. I don't think any town is going to want to say, yeah, go ahead. And, right. I don't need to be on that committee, but you're going to spend $1 million for my tax, on behalf of my tax lawyers. I mean, it is our job to, to do it, um, but it, it's short-sighted to, like, I, I agree with Phil, it's short-sighted to flip the weight towards the towns rather than towards the school committee. I'm not, I'm not volunteering to be on the committee. <laughs> That makes but, sense, though. Yeah, so that, so go, you're I'm doing gonna, four, I'm, four, and one. I'm, I'm going to go back to our budget, ten point four million a year. Yeah. We have a subcommittee that figures it out, brings it to the board, we vote on it. Yeah, but you, you also have a subcommittee that's handed a document by these nice people over here that has everything in it. That, yeah. yeah, but you're always there, not starting from scratch. Yeah, but you know. So that brings it up to a nine member if we do four, four, and one. Yeah. I just think it's too. I think it's too. I many. think it's a lot of people. Yeah. Well, you can't. You have to have four because there's four towns. Every town has to be represented. You can't say we're only going to take three of the towns and one of you doesn't get to get represented. I, mean, I, I don't think that sounds right either. Because um, guess what? They'll vote. <laughs> can I just ask? I, this is a crazy question, but is it? Is it? Are we really talking about like a two-year committee or a three-year committee, or are we really talking about a committee that forms to determine? what the next steps are. I mean, we have the committee has to have a charge, and the charge can't be, here's my seven-page list, make this happen. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so one of the things, the other part of the feedback that we got from that list was, like, lawnmowers should be on it, and, you know, like, yeah. maybe the committee is actually 
school committee, and the first steps is to take a much deeper dive into the list, really talk about the practical places that this goes, bring those recommendations out, and then, okay, so that committee's done, old, next committee. This is the bigger thing, we try again. I mean, I don't know, I'm just feeling it out. Definitely the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Definitely the formation of this subcommittee, or one of these committees, whatever we're, is to talk about next steps. Uh, we do have a sense that 3.4 is going to be a real challenge and we are looking at ways to bring it down but we do need a committee to come together and really look at what it is we can't live without and what we need to what we need to um, find other alternative funding for or to to decide what we can do I, I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense uh, to have one ad hoc just to talk about next steps to guide us to get help us with the timeline um, and then maybe bring in some other people from the towns builders or, or whatever to to say this is what we're doing this is what our plan is I think that we do need we need to put some people together for guidance on where to go right now I mean, not right now, but where we are now. The uh, company from Amherst, who was part of the anvil envelope upstairs here, um, I think if we're looking for somebody to help us out as a professional, maybe they should be, I mean, I know we have to pay them and stuff, but maybe we need to bring somebody like that aboard to help us out with this. You know, they're talking about contractors and stuff. I'm not sure how many of these other contractors ever worked prevailing wages before, which is a big difference than the private sector and when you come to the school and stuff. Um, maybe we need some, you know, maybe have the committee, like you were saying, have the committee look at the 3.4. But I really think whatever's on the 3.4 that the people put together, Darius and Patty and, and yourself, I mean, it, their needs. We, we need them, and there's, this one's, you know, the lawnmower is this old. It's not, it's not probably not gonna last another season. And there's no nothing in the budget says we can go out and buy a X amount of dollar lawnmower on the budget money next year. I think one of the angles was to create this committee was to help with, there was concern about the lack of transparency or trust within the list. You know what I mean? You saw you know, how very quickly people are going to go to the list and go through it. And we can't bring a list forward. We've got to bring this is the, the, the package moving forward. And we, this list has been, has been brought down by this particular group. And you have to have some faith in this particular group to bring this Correct. trust down. That the administration alone's list was not, I mean, I'll be blunt, it was not trustworthy. That, you know, why do you need hand dryers? Why do you need, you know, kind of going through, you know, second guessing the decisions administration so this committee has to have some connection to the community that trusts the number coming out of it and I think that's really why the committee the idea of the committee coming together was so that it doesn't come to a meeting somewhat which happened the other night where why do you need this you know why is this a priority you know you know you don't need to have cushioned seats in the in the gym you know I mean there's no cushioned seats in the gym you know some of those things that were said were just kind of you know there was not a lot of um, you know, it was, it was reactionary to the list. And so we need a group that's going to go through. There's still going to be reactionary to the list. There's still going to be people that say, you don't need any of this stuff. You know, we can teach on a dirt floor somewhere, like, you know, out, out in the community. You know, but I think that's the idea where the, where the, why this group was being put together. And so while I think, it, I think it does, I agree, I think it has to be school committee heavy. You are elected members to decide these things. And then do you add in some of those people that you feel is necessary in order to get the buy-in from the town governments? Or do those community members go back to the town governments I mean, within that system? But that was the idea that to create this group. You know what I mean? The, the list has already been created. Those are the needs, those are the wish lists. You know, we can get away with some of the stuff not on the wish list, eventually it's gonna come up. Um, but some of the stuff has to get done. It's gonna be very difficult for us to ring, unring the bell now. Right. Because we, we did a not such a good job in that presentation. They did not want to see pictures of goalposts with peeling paint. They did not want to see pictures of a half-dead lawnmower. 
we needed to show them pictures of buckets in the hall, stains in the ceiling, those kinds of things. Not some of the stuff that we showed them, that's what set those guys off. And unringing that bell is good luck with that one. The sound effects, though, helped. Oh, oh yes, that was good. They did help. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. So back to the number on the committee. <coughs> I like seven. I like seven. Principal, two school committee men members, and four people from the town. Um, because the school committee members, they're going to be reporting back here anyway. You know that we're all going to be behind those two school committee members who would be on this committee. Yeah, that committee has right? no power to do anything. Right. right. Yeah. There's right. seven people. You're absolutely right. It's right here. It's coming back here. Right. So I don't think that it's going to be town heavy if we put four people from the town on the committee and two from the school committee because does that make sense yeah totally yeah. um i think if you get more than seven or eight it's going to become a two on wheel date you can't get 10 people to agree on a pizza um insofar as the list i think that that's the first thing they're going to look at is what do we really need to solidify on this list and we go from there I would like to have a really clear timeline mm. of things. I think that would be one of the first things that the, the new committee would have to really look at. Like, when are we getting this rolling? That would be up to the committee, though. What? To The committee would present us with a timeline. Yeah. I like that. I just think more than seven people. Yeah. Like she said, you can't order a pizza. One from each town, principal, and two school committees. The principal could, theories could bring in Bob or whatever at any given time on it. You make that a motion. That, so I <clears throat> would just worry about, I'm just envisioning that committee and the, and the people from the towns have looking at it differently than what school committee. And I agree with Judy, it, it's our job. Mm -hmm. And so I think. You know, they're going to nix a whole lot of things off that list immediately. And then, I mean, then where are you before you even start? I'm not sure. We can't see it. Yeah, we have to be here to could, defend our choices. Could we do opposite? Could we have four committee members? And then you know how when we have um, negotiations yeah. in that, they elect, like we get Tommy? Yeah. So they could do that with two people whatever two people those selectmen can get together and decide what two people they want and send us two. So we have four school committee members, two members from the different towns, agreed to by the selectmen of those towns yeah. and admin. That's and then it stays school committee heavy. Except if, it, if it's going to go through town meetings, it's nice to have somebody else stand in there with you. So, so now we're up to nine people again. I'm just thinking, I mean, it does require town meeting votes and presentations. Well, every, every town is going to be represented because there's going to be four of us. <coughs> just make sure yeah, that there's Yeah, but they don't see town. us as being part of the town. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and maybe I'm just having still, like, muscles, twitches, and spasms from the Sunderland votes, but I would really like to have a person from each town so that when they go to town meetings, we can say, here's your representative. Because clearly they don't see us as being so part of the town. Let's go to nine. And so we're up to nine. Go to nine and call the day. Unless we can How get. How many times can change? <laughs> I know. Stop writing. Get a pencil. I, I don't. <laughs> I want seven, but I don't see any way out of nine. Well, she said you couldn't get pizza with ten. This is nine. This is nine. <laughs> <laughs> a lot better than twenty. Maybe Bring you're your own pizza with nine. Brown bag it. <laughs> Brown bag it. <laughs> I just don't see any way, other way out, because everybody has a good argument about it. Uh, Is it the, the census, do you guys like the nine? Oh, I'll make a motion to, uh, for Cindy's idea of the nine. Four school committee, four, min, uh, four towns. As long ministry. as it's not yeah. titled Cindy's and, idea. And Darius says being the chairman. Yeah. <laughs> any other discussion? All in favor? Nine it is. Thank you very much. While we're on the subject. Do you appoint or do we volunteer? He appoints. That's voice on.
Don't even think about it. <laughs> well, well, not if not you, you, if not you, him. Because he's right. the adage, third time punch the charm. Where are we on? Third yourself. time the charm. <laughs> Got a bunch of to take Same thing with you, Mr. Decker. <laughs> I said, if not Mary, then you. <laughs> oh, we got two other people that aren't here tonight, that's all. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Cindy or Phil? Phil, I defer to you. I did a great job on the Blue School. We're so still far. working on so it. So far, I did say so We're far. still working on it. Okay, we got Phil from Conway. Thank you, sir. How about Sunderland? Um, Keith's gonna have budget. Good job, Keith. Well, that's I got fixed. the budget subcommittee. I'm gonna be coaching swimming at Amherst High School. the fire department. I don't even know if I'm gonna be available. You totally oh, jeez, that's nothing. <laughs> fire department. Uh, and then I'm looking at the next one too. Okay. Okay, he's making his choices. I like those choices. I'm already on the building subcommittee. So we have one. <laughs> Lynn Stern. Right Lynn Stern. Lynn Stern. Phil, have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob will be right there. Go to your Bob. Yeah. I'll be Phil, Bob, right. Bob. Mary? 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 <laughs> I said, Bob. Phil, Bob, Bob. We have to have four. There's also yeah, Jamie and Bill. There's also Jamie and Bill. Pair Mary and Sunderland. How often do you expect this meeting? What, what kind of dates are we going to do? Uh, Judy, Judy's got a hand. Judy just handed it off. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to make sure that I have food. We need someone from Deerfield. <laughs> we got Bob. No, we got Bob. Bob Jacker. Pizza, Judy. Pizza. Great. <laughs> Phil, Bob, Paula, Judy, Bob Jacker. Okay. Thank you. So, Phil, Bob, Bob, Judy. We'll bring you food. And Darius be in chair. Points for yep. You'll run the meeting. <laughs> See, we can vote you chair. It's also going to bring food. You'll have a Darius. Snacks. We'll have so many meetings. We'll do exactly what we want by the end. <laughs> Just remember, Tuesdays are Tuesdays are great. I know. Are you for us that meet already on Tuesdays? Here's how that works. And so we are going to send a letter to the towns requesting, because it doesn't have to be a select board member, right? It can be. No, they can send it. Town, is, yeah, town administrator so, or select board member. So do you want the the selectman or the moderator in the town first? I don't think that's up to them. Yeah, don't. It's not us, don't up to us to tell them how to do it. We need a representative from the to town of Waitley. Contact the selectmen and send us somebody. Yeah. And they can contact the moderator and say, They can do whatever they got to do. Happens to be my brother. Tell him, go find somebody. And Richard will go next door and he'll, he'll find his other brother. And he'll put him back on the committee again. So you could it's just kind of wait. Oh, no, 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 no. He's not coming to my house. So I'll work with Darius to um, my name on two floors put already. some dates together so when we invite these folks, when we send out the invitation, they'll have an idea of. Darius, you might want to read uh, Saturday's editorial that was in the Green Toe Recorder. It was very good. It was very complimentary. Okay, we got number E, discuss recommendations yeah. from Superintendent. Kahoy Advisory Committee meet roughly three times a year on her goals, development, mid-cycle year, and end of year. I have already, uh, actually have already um, redone my goals, and they're essentially the same. What had happened last month was, um, from my evaluations last year, when I handed out the binder with all the words and all the things that I have done, and my goals, I had I had eight goals last year, um, I got two things out of that. I needed to work on communication, which I'm working very hard on right now, and also, too, I needed to simplify uh, the way I give information, uh, particularly to the school committee, because they don't need all of that information. So I simplified the goals, and it turned out that um, I actually needed to, to actually embellish more and put on things that I had actually uh, indicated that I was already doing. So I did, and the goals are done, but I would like, I'm requesting a superintendent's advisory subcommittee, and I've asked Cindy if she would um, be the representative for the Frontier Chair, uh, from the Frontier School Committee. I'd like to share what it is I'm doing uh, in a small group 
and so that I, I can explain the complexities of the job and everything I'm doing and how these goals are reflective of the district strategic plan and the, the goals for the superintendent which feed down into the school improvement plans uh, so that we're all together um, kind of coordinated, kind of uh, all feeding off one thing. So we have one vision and one direction for the district. Uh, the schools, when they do their improvement plans, they go there, you know, they add more or they, they take what the district strategic plan is and they move forward. I'm using the district strategic plan to uh, inform my goals, but I have done student goals and district goals and um, a professional goal. And my district goals will include um, the policy committee and uh, changing all those policies. We have about 99 we're looking at, uh, working on. And the, um, the budget process, I'd like to, I would like to be more active in the budget process and I'd like to work closer with the principals, with Patty, the director of special ed and do that. And um, so consequently, I'm asking for a superintendent's advisory committee to help me uh, understand what it is I, I need to be doing, what the expectations are, as well as uh, allowing me to explain uh, in a way that I can go into great depth that I can't really at the school committee meeting, but allow me to explain that what it is I'm doing and to um, share ideas and um, what what I uh, am seeing and the things I am trying to do behind the scenes that I can't really discuss in the meeting. So that's why I'm asking. I'm asking for three meetings. One would, would, would meet before our December meeting so that we can go from the draft goals to, the, um, to bringing them out in public and having you approve them if you wish. And uh, mid-cycle in March, how am I doing on these goals? How do you feel? The school committee should also have goals. We're hoping that eventually we can get the school committee to, to have their goals. And then at the end of the school year, uh, be, before my evaluation, how did I do in reaching those goals? I feel last year that probably there wasn't a lot of understanding of what it was I was doing. And I felt if I, if I wrote it down and made a record of everything that it would help. And I'm not sure that was as helpful. So I'm hoping that uh, having representatives to, uh, to advise me, representatives from each school committee to advise me um, would help. Don't you have that now? Yeah. I mean, the, the, we do superintendent's goals in the, in the joint meeting right. so that we have the goals so that we can then track performance as against the goals. So, like doing another committee now takes away from the goal of having the goals. Well, the goals will come in December. We will have the goals in December. They're already done. We will have the goals in December. But I would like a, an advisory committee to help advise me um, on what it is that I could do better or what it is you're looking for or uh, how, how we can best meet the I needs. I thought we had a meeting last time where we talked about all that. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, have a committee. It'll only meet three times. I'm on it from Waitley. I'm on, good for you, I'm on it from Waitley. It's only three times. It's only three times. I think you she's looking for somebody to bounce ideas off of. I want people to understand too the complexity of the job of running five districts, of being the one person that uh, is, is trying, you know, trying to develop a way to put it all together. It's very hard to make goals for five totally separate school systems because each school has their own personality. And I'm trying to make overarching goals that, you know, that are general. They're not that specific. But I think you'll like the new goals. I went into great detail. Well, well historically, the chairman of the committees going back for years got together before you had this formal presentation of these evaluations and all this other, the chairman got together and, you know, smoothed this 
stuff all over over the over the course of years. So I think it's I think it'd be a good working group. It'd probably be helpful. Thanks. Anybody else have any questions? We need a we need a vote on uh, so approval. moved. So moved. Thank you. All in favor? Stay? No, sir. Stay. Okay. Stay. All. Oh, okay. Thank you. And so are you appointing me, Bob? You me. Have you picked anybody? Have you had any other school committee meetings? Sunderland no. Or Deerfield or? Sunderland. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm meeting with. Um, I'm doing uh, Deerfield tomorrow night. Tonight, okay. this this is three in a row for us, for Patty and myself. Um, Deerfield. Um, I've asked Trevor and uh, Sunderland. I said, Greg. So, thank you. I have nothing tonight. Anything from the collaborative? Yes. Uh, the collaborative is continuing to uh, look at sites. Um, spent the better part of yesterday morning and part of the afternoon looking at sites in Northampton to uh, come up with a uh, their recommendation is they would like to have a uh, to consolidate all their programs under under basically the same roof so that they can better manage uh, the programs. I'm not talking about the ones that mental health or the UIS, but I'm talking about the programs that are locally in the valley. They're in three different buildings right now in Northampton, so they're still working on it. Tomorrow we have two appointments uh, to look at properties there, and I'm sure we'll look at some more before we get through. Do you know what they spend for rental every month or lease every month well, for I know all three buildings? I know there's a building down the street from where they are uh, that they spend $48,000, I think, the rental is annually. That's an awful lot of money. Uh, if, if you read the Northampton newspaper, the uh, court system just is having a building built for them down where they, they tore the hotel down. Yeah. And they're taking 20,000 square feet. Uh, the collaborative seems to think they need 30,000. And the, the, collabor uh, the state's going to pay almost 800,000 in rent, which is $40 a square foot. Whether that includes the heat, the janitorial, and everything else, I don't know. Yeah. But that was in paper the other day and uh, so you know they're talking that they need 30,000 square feet okay so it's significant what they're trying to do and uh, but they keep it only one roof well they they seem to think that that's the, and there's there are properties around that have that many square feet and you know some of them have to be they have to be renovated right and the big problem is if if the collaborative renovates them they have to comply with the uh, prevailing wages and and all those costs and it, it, it's just if you can find some developer that's going to make you a presentation that everything's packaged it might work out with a lesser dollar I'll let you know what's mm -hmm. happening who else, who else besides you went to to the Cape no, Phil, Phil was there. Uh, Any, anything you want to share? Uh, well, I guess the the one thing that the superintendent handed out was the cover thing from the Suzanne Fund, the Office of the State Auditor. And they just did a study that's online. Um, the superintendent has it as well of the pro financial problems facing regional rural districts. Um, and I went to their presentation of it, and the fellow that's listed on the back is Ben Tafoya. Uh, who, who ran it and the one of the things that came out in that is that there's now more momentum than ever before to do the hundred percent per year again for regional yeah. uh, mm -hmm. transportation reimbursement and there's two state senators in particular from Eastern Mass from the suburbs who have made it their mission to help the rural out on this one issue which just blew me away yeah. um, this Karen Spilka or whatever she's amazing um, but uh, the, the other thing about it is that there's uh, going to be money this year to, for grants and for stu uh, to do studies for specific districts to look at regionalization again. Um, and, um, Billy's going to go on that committee. No, no, you know, so, but he got so, off of these two, right? I'm done. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, but one of the things that, and, and the, one of the things that they were looking for is a volunteer for a district that's willing to, with state help, 
to try a, a, a cycle at town meeting, a budget cycle approval pro thing through town meeting, where all towns have the same tax rate for one year, that, that the state would equalize the difference. And they were looking for towns to, for districts to, to sign up for that. And they would use that as some sort of springboard to try to do other things, you know, which would probably be onerous and horrible. But there might be my money, so I, uh, I signed us up as a possible, <laughs> as a possible, that something of, a, a, of interest, well, whatever. Who gave so. him the vote? No, no, I, I, I put, you know, I just, you know, I mean, the, we, we, it might, it might, then who knows? That one, I now, there's, who knows? There's, you never know. Um, it's like, the pots yeah. of money, you gotta chase them. There's bigger and, and more um, active, you know, there's, you know, uh, in the central area of the state, Massachusetts, Clavin, uh, they're, they tend to be, so I, if we do get chosen, that would be what I'd bring it to the committee and then we would decide what to do. But, uh, so, uh, yes, this, and, and I'll talk about this in my, my, uh, speak, my, uh, speak. Is there anything else going yeah, Bob, on? Uh, Trevor uh, McDaniels from Deerfield and I attended the, the early meeting uh, on Wednesday with the Massachusetts Regional School Committee Association. And they had an interesting presentation about the foundation budgets and all that information. And they have a program that they're doing. It costs us a little money. It's $500 per town. But they'll go through and dissect all the state reports and figure out what we're doing wrong and how we can probably get target things to do to get more aid, et cetera, et cetera. You can give me that money and I can tell you. It's 500, 500 bucks uh, each town to do the work. You want to take it on for the 500 bucks? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I already got the list. Yeah. But anyway, uh, there's a YouTube presentation. Once I get the link, I'll make sure that the superintendent sends it to everybody so that they can read okay. it, listen they to it. They take payment out of the savings that they themselves generate. Yeah, that could be. But anyway. I just, it was a nice presentation. They did a good job in the presentation. Two committee members from uh, the school in the middle of the state worked on this whole project. Thanks, Bob and Phil. Uh, principal's report, please. No problem. Um, for those who weren't here, well, I know we are missing a few people last week. Did anybody come last week? Last week or last month? Sure. Last month will take. Since last you went through the trouble. Well, I collect them all afterwards. And the other thing I gave it out was the uh, Thanks. last week, which I want to make sure people get, was the uh, guidance office uh, report of the class of 2017, which is just it's a great read. You got that right? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I also enjoy it. So anyway, I want to make sure everybody got that. So um, going on to this this uh, this month, um, I attached today's professional development list. I just thought um, I didn't want to write a long write up about it, but just kind of seeing all the different offerings that we had in today's professional development day, um, a lot of great directions were going in the building with the professional development. Quarter quarter one closes this week. Um, overall, it's been a smooth uh, quarter. Uh, congratulations to our, all our fall athletics. It's kind of unheard of, but every one of our fall sports teams made the postseason. Boys are winning 3-0 right now in the field. Um, soccer, um, girls went down today, making it into the second round for soccer, and all the rest of the week is kind of booked out. So Did you have win? all of our teams making the postseason. The girls won, you said? No, they lost today. But they won the first. Yeah. They won on Saturday. Their parents lost froze to death watching them. So. We could get chilly out there watching it, but as I just said, boys are out there right now winning 3-0, yes, yes. so they'll be going on for us this week. Um, and um, I want to thank the Kevs Foundation. They gave us a, a donation of an AED um, and all the accessories to it, a little portable one. Next year, starting in July, with the new laws coming through, that we have to have an AED at every school event, especially athletic events. How about school committee meetings? We probably need one here, too. Uh, I, can keel, I can keel over in a minute. Technically, I can bring the portable one up to this meeting if it gets kind of heated. Um, we, we have one in the building, but it is a financial burden for us to meet this law because of our we have so many satellite sites. Um, and so we're going to have to get portable AEDs, AEDs 
to go with the coaches, and then they have to, you know, they remember they bring that thing around, you know, you have a bag of balls, a med kit, you know, the change of clothes kit, the ice pit, the, the water kit, the AED. I mean, we're going to have to be renting um, minivans pretty soon to, um, for all our offsite stuff, but we do a lot of different fields and that kind of thing. So we're probably going to have to purchase two more um, for the fall athletics. And we have to try to figure out, like, what do we do for golf team? Is there an AED at the golf club? Are they all the golf clubs they go to? So there's a lot of, and they cost a couple of grand a piece. So um, this was a very important um, Is there any donation. grant money out there to get these? Um, we're not going to qualify for it. It's another one of those feel-good laws where they pass the law and they don't get any money to go with it. Just um, an unfunded mandate? Another unfunded mandate. Okay. Just um, get a hold of Susan. There is. Right you, there can apply, you can apply for money, um, but again, um, I don't think we qualify due to our um, our school funding level. So, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll figure out a way, or you'll see it in the budget next year. Or, again, it's one of those one-time occurrence. Although, then you have to upkeep them. So I'll have to put some sort of thing. We're developing that now. You have to, to upkeep all every year. Every year you have to have them service. You got to change the the patches. The up make sure the batteries are operational. Um, the ones we do in the building, we have that on a on a schedule. But anyway, that's where we're at there. Um, the fall play has been announced. Well, I guess you can almost say it's winter play since it's happening in December at Agatha Christie's. And then there was none. Then there were none. Um, we'll be on December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And then, as you may have heard also, that we are um, scheduled to do a musical in March. Um, and I'll wait for that to be formally announced to come out. But into the, no, it's not into the woods. Wizard it's Wizard of Oz, I think. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Into the woods, that's a different one, yes. Um, and then we have the math modeling competition, which is an annual event where we enter the nation's uh, competition for uh, mathematics. And it's a two-day event where the kids kind of camp out up here and um, work on a math problem, submit it. And, you know, several years ago, it's been almost 10 years ago or longer, um, we did very, very well in it. But um, each year, we, we get, some groups get honorable mention, but we're hoping for a good year this year. And then you have a list of all the other ongoing things. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay, you. Your turn. Great. Um, my superintendent's report I handed out earlier, it talks about the MASC and the MASS uh, convention that Bob Decker, Phil Cantor, and others went to. Uh, I listed the names and some of the uh, workshops that they did attend. And uh, so they did come back. Uh, we also had a discussion in Waitley. One of their members went, and she came back with some really uh, interesting stuff on, on goal setting uh, for school committees. And so that was very interesting. Uh, all students in grade student eight took the computerized MCAS in the spring. Uh, we're having the uh, our elementary director speak to that, the scores, uh, next month at the December school committee meetings. Um, I don't know when we're coming to the high school with the high school scores, but I am here to tell you that they were very, very good. I'm, I'm very pleased. I will talk about getting Sarah here perhaps for the next meeting. Um, uh, I went to, I attended the Mars meeting last week where the uh, results of the study, it was a large, long, big study, supporting student and community success, updating the structure and finance of Massachusetts regional school districts. Uh, it was reported by uh, the Office of the State Office, office uh, Auditor, Suzanne Bump, and here's a handout from the findings. Uh, Phil referred to it. Uh, it was very interesting. What they're doing is uh, there's a lot of suggestions. There's not a lot of um, binding stuff here, but there's a lot of suggestions that uh, the state uh, develop deeper, you know, incentives. The state should fund its commitment 100% of the uh, regional bus transportation. Uh, rural school districts should conduct uh, periodic reviews of the regional agreements. Uh, the legislature should empower DESE to work with uh, a willing district to develop a pilot program that would result in a single tax rate across the towns. This is what Phil referred to. The legislature should uh, streamline the budget adoption process for regional schools. And uh, they also go on to, you know, to say the Commonwealth should consider providing planning grants 
to examine uh, the combination of existing RSDs into larger districts, uh, larger groupings, and uh, MSBA should provide guidance on uh, to determine whether it seeks to recoup grant money provided by school districts uh, that close school facilities. And uh, the last one is uh, the legislature should consider allowing RSDs to use regional transportation authorities to provide school district transportation. So this, it was, it was very interesting and uh, the hope that I have is that they will move forward, particularly with the 100% of regional transportation. And uh, it did come up at the meeting, uh, the, uh, the bond presentation, uh, looking at the regional uh, agreement. I'm not sure how this committee feels about that. Um, Mars will, for roughly about $5,000, they will come in and they will lead uh, a committee or group of us to look at our regional district uh, agreement to see if we need to update, if we want to update anything. Uh, my understanding is the regional district uh, agreement was made, in the, it was come together in the 70s? 1958 and amended in like 68. Yes. It's two sentences long. They're going to say we need it amended. It's two sentences. It's two sentences. We're going to pay him $5,000 yeah. to read two sentences. Yeah, I, I can tell you. No, no, I can save that money. Save it's money and know to construct well, a new you know, yeah. It, yeah. It's a little bit more complicated than that because we're at 7 through 12, okay? And we've got so much mm -hmm. inefficiency in the elementary schools in, in the administration there with four sets of books and all that. And the reason it didn't, one of the reasons it didn't go K-12 the last time it got studied was the teachers in the elementary school make substantially less than what the teachers here did. Really and the uh, insurance payments that are made to for the, for the staff is higher at Frontier than it is in most of the elementary schools, not all. So uh, the benefit mm -hmm. would have been they would have got the regional school aid for the, for the elementary grades. But, you know, at the time, when we debated it here, Stan Rosenberg was here, and I said, why don't we do a K-6? And he said, they won't approve it. If you were, any of you were here that night, mm -hmm. he said, they won't approve it. Well, they've done K-6s since. And I think the taxpayers in these towns need to look at what the costs are, what the benefits are. The biggest problem with the elementary schools is nobody wants to see the elementary school close in their town. Uh, if you read the paper yesterday or over the weekend, Hamden and Wilbraham's in a big fight because they want to close a middle school in Hamden and send them all to Wilbraham. So you have, the agreements have to make sure that they protect those interests so all of a sudden those people don't get thrown aside. But so I, I feel um, that I'd be remiss if I didn't offer up to the, the school committee um, the option of looking at the regional agreement as it stands, the Frontier Regional School District Agreement, uh, just the 712. Look at it, maybe we can update it. Uh, there's a, different areas where the regional agreement is silent. Do we want it to remain silent? Do we want to add all those things? Uh, so um, I would just like to put it out there. Uh, we could revisit it. Can of worms, meat can opener. And that's fine too. I just feel like I would, I feel like it's important that I present it to the school committee. If, and that's all. So the next thing, uh, just again, and I notified everyone, we're pleased to announce that our new director of food service is Mary DeLusa. She's previously worked at the Deerfield, uh, Deerfield Elementary uh, School as the cafeteria manager. She was an assistant manager at Whole Foods, and she also worked at American International College in food service. She's transitioning to her new position this week. She is on a 210-day contract, and um, she'll work eight hours a day. And so we're very pleased to have her. Our consultant will be done um, next, week. Week. next week. Next week. So you had mentioned efforts were underway to meet with the consultant and claw back some of the debt that we had uh, extended, and how how is that going? And 
Are we clawing and clawing and clawing and clawing? Oh, I claw, more? I claw. Claw. She's wicked. Claw. I'm Santa Claw. Are you? I'm <laughs> Santa Claw. Are you? Is there going to be. I'm working on it, Philip. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything? I have a motion to adjourn. No. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. no. yeah. Oh, we have to go next week. It only takes a few apologize. minutes. It's only a few yeah. minutes. I tried. Yep, I got it right here. Oh, I tried. Right. I had close. Uh, can you guys shut down the cameras and the voice and all that stuff and go outside here for about five minutes or less? Can I make a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.